All right, we'll go through the order flow here in Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com. Uh, become a member there, and you'll have access to free resources. Uh, then uh, reach out to us at support at veloxpro.com uh, if you have any questions or issues. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, you can get a free trial here uh, if you want to try Bookmap and get up and running. Uh, you get a 14-day uh, free trial. It's under uh, the pricing tab at bookmap.com. There's two versions. There's the basic uh, and the advanced. And you can see the price here. They are billed quarterly. Uh, and it's for 14 days is that trial, right? And the difference between the two uh, are these uh, add-on features that you can see here, and especially being able to trade right from the chart. Okay, if you're a quant or a prop shop, you can reach out to us here uh, and um, uh, contact us, and we can uh, work with you if you have any sort of custom solutions. Uh, you can also uh, read down here, click on this link uh, to look at the comparison uh, of the features between the different versions. Okay, so um, uh, in the uh, web portal area for the members, okay, once you sign in, this is where you'll land. And I want to show you, uh, there's a new uh, webinar here. So if you want to register for next week's webinar, uh, you can click here. Okay, or any upcoming webinars, that's where you'd click. Okay, and uh, you'll come to the registration page. You'll see from the drop down here, this is the current one we are in. Okay, just click on the drop down and select the uh, next one here for the 10th through the 14th. And uh, let's register. Okay, and it says registration complete. So verified uh, and you're all set. All right, now under the education tab, this is where you'll also find uh, the book map uh, recordings. Uh, of the webinars as well as other videos. So uh, there's a whole host of different uh, things to view here, a, a lot of information. And uh, just wanna show you where the recorded webinars are. You can go through some of the other um, links uh, on your own time, uh, but click on this link here for bookmap recorded webinars and then click here for the playlist. All right, uh, this takes you to the uh, recorded webinars page, you'll see the all of the uh, recorded webinars here in the playlist. If you scroll up to the top, this is the one from Monday. Okay, I had technical issues on Tuesday and yesterday, another technical issue was not able to record either webinar, which is a pity. Uh, there was some good stuff uh, in uh, uh, yesterday's webinar that we saw uh, especially. But um, anyway, we'll, we'll see it again. Uh, this, is, this market repeats uh, and we'll just uh, continue on. All right, so let's go through uh, the order flow, all right? Okay, we're gonna look at the higher time frames, uh, and we're gonna get a macro picture. And then we're gonna do, um, well, we're gonna do three things here uh, in general, right? Look at that macro picture, and then we're gonna look at the microstructure, okay? And get, get, get an understanding of what's going on, then we're gonna look at the order flow within that microstructure. Okay, so higher time frames first. Uh, this is how most of the traders uh, use Bookmap, uh, and um, uh, they have many different trading methodologies. It doesn't matter, right? Order flow is order flow. All right, so then we'll look at this microstructure. Uh, you can use the same type of analysis you do for your higher time frames and your microstructure, uh, and uh, and then you'll you want to look at very objectively read the order flow here. Okay. Most of the scalpers here will just be looking at microstructure and order flow. All right, this allows you, uh, this software allows you to really pinpoint your entries and exits in your in your trade management. Okay, so uh, let's take a look. Okay, uh, let's see here. We can look at the ES. Uh, Let's take a, today, let's take a look at the um, oil market, uh, just for, uh, change it up a little bit, uh, and for some kicks here, uh, it's a little more volatile. Uh, we can see a move into uh, a big drop from the, uh, the other day. This was the uh, oil inventories. We're right back up there. So uh, kind of interested in that level at the moment. Okay, so let's, uh, let me expand this.
step back here, uh, look at the daily. Okay, you can see a big drop uh, from uh, back in March, uh, right back up into this area here. So some interesting stuff going on there. Uh, let's look at that 30 minute chart. Okay, so we, you can see we've been pulling back uh, and uh, oil's been doing uh, doing pretty well, all right? So um, uh, back up into some of these areas here, uh, we have the 52 figure up here, uh, and this is where we dropped from uh, before. So I am interested in that level, okay, right around there, uh, as well as the swing high around uh, 88, 51.88, right? And let's look, take a look at a five minute chart, okay? All right, now you can see the open here, nine o'clock. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay, here's our here's our nine a.m. open. Okay, and we've uh, continued to the upside, and uh, here's our level, uh, seventy three or so, somewhere around there, maybe seventy seventy eight, seventy seven, uh, and um, and you can see the uptrend here. So we are in uh, a continuation from uh, overnight session in the uptrend. Okay, other levels I'm interested in, uh, right in this area here, somewhere around there, okay, around this uh, 5150, that makes sense as well uh, due to the uh, the number. In fact, let me just put it right at 5150, okay. And, yeah, I mean, there's some other subtleties in here, maybe this 57 area. But let's take a look now at the, the microstructure in bookmap, okay, in oil. And... Let me uh, turn on my CVD, okay, and I'm going to, you might notice here, okay, so um, uh, this is actually a, a small bug um, due to the um, change in, in um, time, uh, our advance for daylight savings. You can see at 1030, my CVD right here, reset to zero. So um, uh, I have a reset here for both. I have two CVDs. I have the CVD here, which is, this is the cumulative volume delta uh, indicator uh, that we have here with our new bookmap API, right? Um, so let me, let me reset these. Uh, you can reset them to zero at any point, all right? So um, uh, I'm first gonna trash this one here. And uh, let's uh, let's reset it. Okay, I, I just want to I'm going to show you. There's a few different ways to do this. Okay, so you can reset it now, uh, for example, uh, or uh, we can. Um, uh, and if I just click on that, you can see that um, uh, book uh, book map will reset the CVD right away, and you can see it occur here uh, just below the uh, this window. All right, uh, but I, I don't want that, so I'm going to get rid of that one. Uh, and you can see we retain all of the data here still for you. All right, so let's add one, and let's add it for today. Uh, and um, uh, for this one, let's um, let's uh, reset it for 9 a.m. at the cash open. All right, and I'll have that reset every single day. Okay. Now we're going to see this uh, is going to be a little different here. Although we do have a lot of price action at 10:30, uh, you're going to note uh, that the um, uh, the reset. If I zoom, oh, I don't have I don't have. Um, uh, okay, all right. Well, anyway, this will do the trick uh, at 9 a.m. But I don't have data that goes back as far as 9 a.m. So it started when I opened up my book map. All right, let's go to CVD here. Uh, there's another way you can do this. Uh, we can uh, just reset this for uh, for today uh, instead. Okay, so let's just uh, make this uh, for uh, today. Okay, and let's make it for 9 a.m. Okay, and uh, you can just do it. You can just do it right there and edit it right here. All right. So uh, okay. So I'm all good there. Uh, and uh, just wanted to show you that uh, some of the functionality here uh, for those of you um, with this Bookmap 5.0 version. Okay. There um, are. Uh, you, this is where you'll find uh, that CVD. It's under the API add-ons configuration here. Okay. The um, 
uh, you, you'll see a, a few different others here, but we'll, we'll go over them uh, another time. Okay, that's where you find the CVD. It will open up, or it will not open up the indicator panel. You will need to come down here and open it up with this. Click on this little arrow at the bottom of your uh, price ladder. Okay, and then if you want to get this um, readout here in the uh, widget panel, just click on the um, gear or sprocket here. Uh, and then uh, make sure that they are blue here. Okay, that means that they are selected, uh, and uh, uh, you can um, uh, for the uh, uh, menu here, the show hide indicator widget panel, right? And then they'll show up here. Okay. Okay, so our levels again uh, up here around 73 to 77, and then uh, at, at the, the figure at 50. All right, Seth, uh, you want to know how to, how to use this, this tool with the CVD. Okay, uh, there's three different ways to use this tool. All right, we're looking for um, divergences, okay, or we're looking for uh, accumulation, right? We're looking for uh, some, it's, we're looking for insight here uh, and how, how this um, indicator will give insight. First off, let me go over how, how it works, how it operates. Right? So um, uh, let's see here. I mean, I'm going to take some time here. I mean, we're kind of channeling uh, anyway uh, at the moment. Uh, I mean, we do see nice big cluster of volume up here and a lot of absorption up in this area. Okay, so uh, uh, anyway, let me... Um, We'll get to the order flow uh, in just a few minutes. Okay, let me cover this. Okay. Okay, I'm zoomed in here pretty closely, and you can see uh, no, no transactions have taken place here. Nothing, right? Okay, my CVD is flatlined, and uh, the output here, uh, numeric values in the CVD, and I have two of them. Okay, one is showing 13 lots and greater. And the of, of trades and the other one is showing just uh, every single trade right so uh, there are they are zeroed okay now let's zoom out a little bit here and uh, we see some transactions all right so let me okay so we're at zero here and then all of a sudden boom okay uh, four aggressive market buy orders take place all right so what occurs here in the in the in the uh, readout for the CVD uh, is we see that um, uh, four lots have traded. Okay, our reading is now four. Okay, we see the bump up here uh, in the CVD uh, up to four, and uh, our 13 lot filter um, has not. Uh, and let me uh, actually I'm going to add another column here. I'm going to turn this to a trades counter. Okay, so. Uh, and let's zoom in on this actually, because this was three different events that took place. All right? Okay. And you can note here. Look at the timeline. We are looking at nanosecond, or um, yeah, nanosecond level here, or uh, microsecond level. Uh, and uh, there are three different events that took place here. Right? Let's go through the first event. Okay. This was one trade here. Okay, we one event that took place for a volume of two, and my my columns uh, trade counter and volume counter uh, shows me that very very objectively. This is what occurred at this moment. All right. Now another trade took place. Okay. So uh, we had one event. Now we have two events. So I know that this this lot this is uh, for lot size of one. Okay, we can verify that. Okay, just hover over this area. See, it says one. This one says two. The next one, uh, this one says one as well. Four four lots have traded three different events. All right, um, and um, now now my CVD uh, shows four. Right, and it also uh, gives the output here of what occurred. Okay, so uh, now we're going to see, hopefully here, all right, we're going to see a cell. Let's see here. All 
I'm just way too zoomed in. Okay, so now we get a bunch of cell orders here. Okay, as you can see right right in here for five. Well, it, it, this, this CVD um, is, is cumulative, cumulative volume delta. It's showing the volume and it's showing the change in the volume. We had positive volume uh, with market buy orders. Now market sell order is negative. It just adds them together. That's it. That's all this indicator does. Okay, and it's showing a value of negative 24. So there are more sellers than buyers. Okay, it's also because of uh, uh, this one is in the um, well in the window. And as I continue to zoom out, now we're getting an overall view of what occurred. Okay, with the aggressive volume. Okay, now the the other um, uh, output here is the CVD for 13 lots. So we saw trades that took place and they were only for um, uh, small lot size. Okay, one was a two, the other one was one, and the other one was one, right? Those are gonna be filtered out in the second um, setting here for the CVD. And this is a great feature, all right? So what this allows you to do is look for larger traders, okay? Anything that is below 13 lots, it will not display. Anything that is above, or 13 lots or above, it will display. And you can see, so we have a skew here. Larger traders are actually uh, more on the positive side with 754, okay? They're being more aggressive. Why 13? Um, uh, this is a setting from uh, Futures Trader 71, and I've just kept it. Uh, so um, uh, I, I would use your own studies for this uh, and, uh, and, and take a look here. Uh, we, we can play around with it. Uh, if you like, that's uh, that's no no problem at all, and uh, and try to get gain some insight from it. Okay, where where in this market in the oil market, okay. Now he was using it on the S and P E mini. Um, in the oil market, though, uh, is is this really helping us? Maybe maybe we want to lower it down a little bit, right? Uh, and look for maybe traders over I don't know over ten or maybe over five or something like that. Okay, uh, but. Um, Let's, we'll just keep it at, well, no, I'll show you how to how to um, uh, edit that. All right, so we'll edit that here. We'll click on CVD 13 lot, okay? And uh, now we're going to um, just lower it here, okay? And it does it on the fly, all right? So now we're looking at 13 or greater, all right? And, uh, and there it is. Okay, so maybe this gives us a little more insight of uh, like in some of these areas. Okay, all right, what does it show? All right, let's get back to the, um, the original uh, question here. Is that going forward or does it, uh, it is from, Michael, it's from, it starts, the, the CVD counter starts from when you open up bookmap. However, I just showed you guys uh, some of the ways of resetting that data to zero it to whenever you like okay so it's a it's a real nice feature I mean you can uh, like a, after 11 like right here or uh, we you could look at maybe what that CVD is showing you at that point okay by resetting it or you can just hit reset now uh, by when you change the large lot um, well, it, it's up to you. I mean, uh, if you want to develop some sort of strategy out of this, I mean, this is not a strategy. Uh, this is just data and an output, but we're, it's, it has you know, a lot of flexibility here for you to uh, uh, put something together uh, and uh, any, any sort of way that, that you like. Okay? You know, the, the, the filter uh, also allows you to um, uh, not just filter the uh, larger uh, uh, lot size, but also smaller lot size, right? So, for example, we'll come up here. Let's click on it. Uh, so now I'm looking for uh, minimum accountable volume size, okay? So only display if um, that minimum accountable volume size is of five, or five lots or greater, okay, per event, okay? There's maximum uh, as well, okay? So we can look for... Uh, uh, you know, a, a maximum here, and we can input this. Uh, we're just uh, seeing a nice, nice drop down into some of these levels here. Okay, getting down to our 5150 area, right? Okay, so um, uh, anyway, um, 
yeah, I'd like to cover that for you guys. Um, got caught in the CBD stuff here. Um, all right, uh, the um, uh, minimum accountable uh, or maximum accountable. So it's the opposite, right? So we're making the cutoff at like uh, I don't know. With oil, we can we can make it 20, right? So this is actually now going to display. Um, hmm, actually, let me uh, let me put that down to. Uh, um, let me let me just uh, uncheck that. All right, let's go back to the regular one here, uh, and then we'll put the max at 100. Okay, or make we'll make that one 20. Okay, so now I'm filtering. Uh, the green one here uh, is only showing me uh, any any uh, activity here, any events that took place for um, uh, less than 20. Okay, so one on up through 20. Okay, they might have traded 19. Uh, lots in one event. Okay, that will display here in the CVD. Okay, anything more than 20 though, it will not. Or 20 or more. All right, so that's how that works. So you can really put up, you can uh, input um, uh, all sorts of things here to look for, uh, uh, you know, and, and study different um, uh, volume measures here. All right, so that's the, the idea is to offer you that flexibility. Okay, all right, so how do you use it? All right, well, uh, there are many different ways. Uh, there's Well, there's three different ways that we're going to cover. Okay, this area up here, a lot of absorption, okay? But price still did advance through, right? We're looking for areas where there's absorption, but price doesn't really advance, okay? So let's zoom into this area here, all right? Okay, look at the spike. Uh, in uh, right in this area right here okay so we spiked into this lo high level of liquidity here and we traded there's no question about it right uh, we can see that uh, uh, the aggressive buyers that uh, took all of that uh, liquidity and 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 then uh, and then some okay it actually went a little bit further up in this area here okay but then we was, was went sideways for a while okay but there's a spike here uh, in um, uh, the CVD big spike, okay. But look at price movement here. What did price do? Nothing, right? It just went sideways. Okay, so uh, this is showing absorption. Okay, larger traders are absorbing price up at this area. All right. Now, if uh, your strategy is to look for areas of absorption at your levels, and you're starting to identify larger players then you're starting to look for reversals, okay? That's a potential strategy, okay? Now, we continue to uh, come up to the upside here and we continue to absorb, okay? Larger players are getting, a, they're, they're uh, uh, getting filled up in these areas here, all right? Okay, uh, and, um, uh, and you can see that that was a high that I have so far, right? So this is this is showing you the absorption. Okay, we saw the initial absorption here. Now this one's a little trickier. Uh, I mean, uh, you can see that um, uh, you know price did continue on up to the upside, uh, and they continued to absorb. But it, we did get some movement, right? We we wanted to see um, when, like in this example here, there was no price movement, but we did see the spike in the CVD. Right, but you know uh, uh, this one's a little little harder to read. Uh, they are absorbing, but we are getting a, a little bit higher movement in price. Okay, we're looking for big moves in in uh, uh, in um, the CVD here, uh, but price going nowhere. All right, so they're just just sitting there absorbing with limit orders, and th and that gives you insight uh, to that uh, divergence. Right. Okay, so uh, it's it's divergence that we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for, um, uh, you know, price to uh, 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 st stay flatlined, uh, but the um, divergence in the CVD still going to the upside, okay? Giving you clues to uh, larger players um, uh, absorbing price at these levels, all right? Uh, and, uh, and you can draw the, those divergences in, you know. Uh, you, you know, you might want to draw your trend line up in here. Uh, and let, let me show you, uh, for example, uh, an image, okay. So just a moment here. All right, so, <clears throat> oh, 
other areas of absorption right now, right now okay, on that CVD. Okay, down at a level we're interested in, 5150. Okay, so, you know, lo looking pretty good. Um, uh, we're, anyway, let me, let me show you this image. It's, it's going to be quicker. Uh, let's see here. Okay, and uh, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll throw these into the um, my handouts folder for you guys as well. Okay, so you know here here we can see that uh, there was a a divergence here uh, in CVD as it continued to go up here. Uh, but look look at the uh, the price structure, right? Higher high or a high up here, uh, a lower high here, but we have a higher uh, CVD, right? Um, you know that that's showing the divergence. Okay, and uh, let me show another one. Okay, that's absorption, uh, and then exhaustion is the other one, and we'll go through this one as well. Okay, and I'm going to throw these into the chat for you or the handouts folder for you. Huh, I don't know if it's allowing me here. Hold on. Okay, well, the absorption one is there. Okay. Let me try it again. Uh, it's not allowing me to. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the uh, CME rule 575. Uh, and uh, we'll input the... Uh, ah, it just won't do it. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay, well, I'll just have to show it to you. Um, and you, you can email me at support, uh, and I can help you out there, okay, and send it to you. Anyway, um, let's see if we, if we get that divergence uh, in any of these areas here. Not really, not really, okay. I'm looking at some of the swings here and comparing. I mean, we do see kind of a, um, uh, a little bit of divergence here with this CVD for the 13 lot, right, which we changed down to five now, okay, back up into this area, okay, we're making a lower high, okay, but look at the CVD here, okay, it's at the same level here, right. So um, uh, this one is, is correct, uh, I mean, it's showing a regular market, Right, but the one that's filtered for the for the larger uh, lot size is showing that divergence. Okay, so that's another way to read this. All right, uh, and uh, let's go through exhaustion. Okay, areas of exhaustion. So what you're going to see in areas of exhaustion uh, is you're going to see price uh, continue to um, uh, to move down. Okay, it's the opposite here of absorption. Okay, price continues to move down. Um, but um, uh, your CVD, and let me bring it up here, okay, and looking at the gold market, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go through this example here, okay. So uh, in, in this image here, price continued to uh, actually move up here. It was making slightly higher highs here, uh, but the CVD uh, was not at all, right. So it's the opposite. Like price is going up, but the CVD is not, okay, and the divergence is the opposite of the absorption. Okay, so and you can see, look, look at the look at the volume that traded up here. Okay, uh, up into a higher high up here, and uh, and very little trading. Well, it just exhausts out and falls right back down into uh, where it can trade in this nice little cluster here of volume, uh, and we go sideways for a while, but uh, we continue to the downside. Okay, all right. So uh, that's the, the other uh, way to use this. Uh, I'm sure you guys can find all sorts of information about um, cumulative volume delta indicators uh, on uh, on the internet as well. And it, you know, it's this is a um, pretty pretty common indicator, and we're just showing it here within Bookmap, okay? So that you guys uh, you guys have it. 
Um, and uh, uh, the other one, now this is a great one. I, I, I think this is my, my favorite, uh, is the, <clears throat> and I covered this on Monday. <clears throat> and let me find it here just a moment. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to input this into the chat for you. All right. Uh, this is under the bookmap um, uh, order flow video, video snippets here. All right. Uh, it's in that uh, channel uh, and uh, or a playlist. And uh, let's just... Uh, we'll look at this one here. Okay, ES, algo bind activity. All right. Now, I'm going to um, input this into the chat for you. So you guys have this link. There you go. All right. And uh, I don't see that kind of activity occurring at the moment, but uh, this was great to see. Okay. Let me go large size here. All right. So we're looking for a accumulation, um, and the CVD uh, is um, – and, and I don't have a CVD uh, output for this, but uh, I, I can tell you exactly what is going to be going crazy to the to the upside. Uh, look at all the aggressive uh, market buys here, okay? But small size, right? They're accumulating position without really moving price against them. I mean, it is going up, right? But uh, it slowly. I mean, it's uh, it starts to advance here. I mean, and they're 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 the ones that are making it go up uh, using their market buys, right? Uh, they can continue to lift the offer here, but they're getting their position on uh, at these little higher higher areas here, right? Uh, and um, uh, this is going to is your CVD is just going to it's going to be exponentially high at this point, right? Uh, and uh, but price isn't really moving up a lot, okay? Now you're going to see this in Bookmap all the time. Um, you're going to see that uh, uh, the aggressive market buys here with small size just continues to at very, very um, uh, uh, sequential time intervals um, it is uh, lifting the offer or hitting the bid and uh, they're accumulating positions. Okay, it's, it's, uh, they're accumulating with small size instead of their, um, setting their limit orders where they can absorb large size and get a good level, larger players can get, uh, the price they want with their limit orders, all right? This is kind of uh, another way of doing that with small size and just accumulating it over. So their average price is going to be between here at 2180, okay, on up to 2183. So their average price is going to be, or is that, yeah, that's 80, okay? Their average price is going to be somewhere around here, right? Around this uh, 81 or 82 area, 81 and a half. All right, so uh, that's another way uh, instead of accumulating by absorption. Okay, they're accumulating with um, their uh, um, their size here. Now you're going to be able to see that in Bookmap, right? Because we don't we don't aggregate the data. Okay, if you look at uh, another chart that um, like a footprint chart, it's going to be aggregated. You're just going to see a larger number here. Right. So instead, now we're, we're, we're really exposing what's occurring here in this market. And you can see that they just continue to absorb. And this is an algo that's working these levels. All right. And this is this is what Bookmap uh, it really um, uh, shines. It, it gives insight to what's occurring here. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to uh, find that with uh, uh, other software because they will aggregate that data. Right. Uh, instead, you can zoom into. We can zoom in and, and see the nanosecond levels here with, with Bookmap, if if you so desire. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So that was a rather exhaustive explanation uh, of the CVD, but I think it's important uh, to uh, to cover that uh, so you guys know. Uh, and um, uh, we did uh, did miss some of the. Uh, uh, order flow stuff here, but um, uh, this was our level of interest at this 5150 area. Uh, and uh, well, if we zoom in here, let's see if we get any of that absorption, right? 
I mean, here you're getting the uh, some of that absorption in this area here. Okay, also down here. Okay, but they continue to slightly go down to the bottom here, or you know, a few more ticks down lower. Okay, just below the uh, 5150 uh, area. Uh, let's see if we maybe we can see some of that accumulation. Not really, not really. Uh, and also, let me, uh, let me bring this up a little bit here. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think. Um, well, for us, I mean, the way the way we've been looking at this is it's is these little areas here where we see, you know, we're looking at our microstructure and our swing analysis, right? Uh, we can see them uh, uh, starting to. Well, you can see a little bit of accumulation. Ah, eh, it's not really that clear. It's not as clear as that example I showed you on the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but um, uh, we come up and we. Um, uh, start to uh, a trade into and above this little level here, okay, uh, up into here, and um, uh, we're starting to see that, um, uh, uh, okay, so the swing analysis, the microstructure is broken, uh, and looking for pullbacks, areas of exhaustion uh, into uh, some of these uh, uh, other little, little areas uh, where per it, you know, may be exhausted before, like down here, okay, or, um, uh, you know, uh, maybe maybe in this little swing here, okay, uh, and we got the continuation to the upside. Now, where are we? Where have we gone? All right, we've gone up and we've gone a little bit shy of it, but um, just about where we broke from, okay. So uh, we we are still kind of um, uh, eh, it's it's still trending down, um, as you can see, and um, uh, we didn't quite get up there, and we saw that um, we kind of exhausted out. Uh, right in this area here, right? Okay, now a nice little cluster of volume here to the downside. Okay, uh, and, uh, and and they're getting pretty aggressive with their limit orders here uh, as well. Okay, so, um, yeah. At this point here, I mean, with the volume that traded down here, maybe look for, we're looking for maybe a small pullback uh, if we get it. Uh, and uh, maybe we can we can test down uh, uh, into into this area here, okay? Well, there's still a lot of buying that was up here though. So it, it's really kind of both ways right now. I'm not, I'm not really getting a good, good read on it. Um, if we came back up into this area here, just a little bit higher, I think it would, it would um, add a little more clarity uh, and to see um, uh, maybe the sellers really take control here. But uh, at this point, the sellers aren't quite in control. Uh, I mean, we see the, the, the aggressive buying that has taken place uh, and uh, some of the selling is starting to come in though, right? So it's a little bit of both ways right now, right? Okay. Uh, let's see here. A few more questions and we'll wrap it up. Uh, is there a way via the mouse to adjust the vertical scale on the CVD panel? Uh, this is addressed in the next version coming up. Okay, Adrian. Yeah, and the way it's going to be addressed uh, is um, uh, you can have all your resets um, and um, uh, you, you know, all the same settings are still going to be there. Uh, however, what it's going to show you uh, is um, the uh, uh, chart range CVD, okay? That's how it's going to work. So, like, for example, in the ES, you know, there would be, like, you know, tens of thousands or, you know, or more uh, volume that traded. And, uh, you know, it, it's not giving us a really good output, uh, with that CVD because uh, we don't see the uh, distinction in, in smaller values, right? Because there's just so much volume that trades. So therefore, uh, what we're going to show is the chart range uh, and the highs and lows within that. And then you'll be able to see the distinction. And you'll be able to filter it uh, very quickly, okay? The way that we, we filter for our um, 
imbalance indicator as well as for our volume columns okay to study certain areas we just put it within our chart range uh, so for example if we wanted to study this area up here okay we can just put it within our chart range right uh, and um, uh, we're looking for uh, you know maybe up here with this uh, uh, imbalance indicators that's going to give us the output for this in as well as our uh, chart range um, trades counter profile here as well as our chart range volume profile here okay so you can see the um, uh, you'll get the uh, uh, computation for these profiles here and then the SVP is when I opened up bookmap All right so uh, uh, that's how you can utilize this chart range uh, to give you insight uh, using your data columns and then uh, with the next version also with that CVD okay All right, guys. Well, um, uh, anyway, uh, like I mentioned, rather exhaustive study of the CVD, uh, but I hope that helped. Uh, and um, uh, let me know if uh, you need anything uh, else uh, regarding uh, some of those images. Uh, we, we can we can send those to you. Okay. Let me try one more time here and see if I can get it into that handouts folder. No, it's not allowing me. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Well, um, yeah, this is, uh, I mean, it's showing recorded here uh, on my uh, my go-to webinar. So hopefully uh, this recorded and um, uh, you guys can access it later if you want to reference it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. All right. Thanks, Seth. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.